Hey YouTube, today we're going to paint works. Work complete. More specifically, we're going to paint the Reaper Bones Orc. Uh, Reaper Bones Orc with hand weapon, to be specific. I'm going to show you three different methods of using a wash. We're going to go over using an oil wash. We're going to go over using uh, a standard like Devlin mud for those of you still lucky to have it. I don't know what the new GW color is. Um, and we're going to go over doing a dip method. Basically all three of those methods, you get your base coat on and then you come back with uh, like a darker color, like a brown or a black color, and you just slap it on and then kind of get the excess off. So. Again, these methods can be used to paint just about anything. Uh, GW works, you name it. So, let's get started. Okay, so here's our orc, and he's primed in black. And I've gone through and dusted him with white. I've also taken the figure and mounted it on a 20 millimeter base. Uh, you don't have to, that's just what I like to do with my miniatures. And then I put some uh, some ballast around it to blend it all in. Gave the orc a base coat of green on all the skin parts. And right here I'm going through and taking some, I think that's rucksack tan from the P3 line and painting his boots. Also going to go ahead and paint his, uh, I guess it's his undergarment or whatever that's underneath the chainmail that he's wearing. I'm going to paint that the same color. You can paint uh, that multiple colors, different colors, however you want to do it. I'm using bootstrap leather to paint any of the leather items. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take the different colors of paint on my palette, like especially if it's browns. And I want to get some different little nuances, and I'll just mix them together. Uh, I think this is a mix of uh, a light brown and some of the rucksack tan on the wood on his shield. When you're painting, I mean, it, you don't have to follow this exact same color uh, recipe. Um, you know, you know. Wood has all different types of nuances and things like that. So maybe one shield you make one color and one shield you make a little different color just to give him something different to identify him with. Instead of just being Orc 1, he can be, you know, Orc 1 but with a different shield. Yeah, that's it. Either way, just have fun painting them. It's the most important part, right? going through and I'm painting um, the uh, leather, uh, some more leather parts on him with different colors of brown and again it could be a mix of something that I've uh, got on the palette. Right now I've got a little bit of the brown on the skin and so I just uh, dipped the brush in the water and kind of wiped it off a little bit. I mean, when you're doing a wash, really don't have to be super specific and super detailed. And I can't, you know, don't be like, I can't, you know, mess up a model. Uh, just get the paint on it because the wash will bring everything together. I use burnt umber uh, to base all my things that I'm going to paint gold. And you'll see why here later. And right here I'm painting the... Uh, 
little sack that he's got on his back. Again, just a mix of a couple of the browns and on my palette. And I'm using steel now to paint the metallics. Um, I think later I come in and I add a little bit of the Vallejo Model Air Rust uh, to my metallic paint on the palette. What you can also do is add a little bit of brown. The brown uh, will give you a similar effect as to what I'm doing on the shoulder pads here. I'm going to go in and take that same metallic color and do the metal pieces on his shield. I said I'm not getting too crazy coloring the lines. Uh, this is a speed paint type thing. Now we get some jack bone and we're going to go in and do his dental work. I'm going to paint the teeth. fangs, the tusks, I guess. Get some blood red or any other suitable nice dark red color and just very carefully paint the eyes. I don't know that all orcs have red eyes but this particular one does. And here's what we got so far. Here I'm taking the green that I used to uh, base coat the skin and I added a little bit of yellow to it just to lighten it up. And I'm going through and I'm doing some highlights. On the on the skin cheekbones the edge of the chin uh, tops of the hands kneecaps places where it would be lighter like uh, where you'd see sunlight hitting it I'm adding a little more yellow to the mix and I'm going in doing a little lighter highlight on the areas I've already touched. Top of the head, top of the ears. That's what we got so far. Now here's where I was talking about using the brown uh, as a base. Uh, I've found that when you use brown as a base your golds uh, look a lot better after, you know, when you when you lay the gold color down. Not sure if it's the logic, just that it does. I don't know the, how many um, orcs would have a lot of gold on them, but we can pretend it's brass. Maybe he's like big pimpin' orc. I'm going to use some testers gloss coat and hit the model with it. You can use uh, most any kind of gloss coat from Walmart, whatever, and then let it dry, and you get something like that. So we're going to do an oil wash here. So get your uh, Windsor Newton oil colors. Uh, my label came off my container of mineral spirits, so I'm using a grease pencil and writing down what it is so I don't forget. Get yourself a little mixing cup. Ta da! Odorless mineral spirits. And you put about that much in. Now, hindsight being 2020, I probably should have just stuck with the brown. I really didn't need the black, but yeah, add some variety to it. This one will have more black. The next one I'll do will have more brown. And just mix it up really good. And 
dab it on. Now you can see the capillary action and everything. This the this wash is just flowing all over this thing. It's flowing into all the recesses. Which is what we want it to do. Gives him a dirty look. He's a dirty, dirty orc. And it looks really sloppy and messy right now, but that's okay. Try to get in there and get all everything covered. Good coverage. Now this is a, a makeup removal or makeup remover sponge. And I just go in and after it's dried for about 10 or 15 minutes, uh, oil paint takes a long time to dry. So just go in and, and just dab off the areas that you need to that have got you know a lot on on it uh, just dab off the excess so that you can get the details that makes sense so we're gonna use some Devlin mud I've got a lot of that stuff uh, my gaming store closed I bought four or five bottles uh, it's kind of elusive hard to find and you take uh, a similarly painted model to the one we had before and it's a similar technique. Just go in there and dab that stuff on. The one difference between this um, method of applying a wash, or this type of wash and the oil-based wash, um, one, the oil-based wash, you have to allow 24 hours for it to dry. And two, uh, this one dries fairly quick, uh, but it dries almost a matte finish. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of a more of a glossy look on the oil washes, depending on what kind of um, paint you're using. And I just take my makeup remover sponge tool thing and uh, get the excess. your finished product. I'm going to go back in later and paint the base and highlight it up. So now we're going to do the dip method. And for the dip method, um, I paint them a little brighter than normal because these things really darken up. Now, for a long time, I've used Minwax Poly Shade. Uh, I picked this up on clearance at like a True Value hardware store for five bucks. Um, I think that's a, what, a pint? The other alternative, and the one that a lot of folks are used to, is the Army Painter's Quick Shade. Um, this is the Strong Tone. I picked this up from Dan at Discount Game Store at a wonderful price. You gotta check him out. Personally, I don't know the difference between the two, um, besides the different, different tint. Um, it seems to go on about the same. So you get yourself a set of pliers, and you grab the model, and you just dip it. Come on, dip that thing in a can. There we go. Oh no, he's in there. Now find yourself a trash can, or like lay out some newspaper or something, and you're going to flick the excess off. And that's kind of what you get. This stuff you'll want to dry for 24 hours and then come back in and uh, dull coat it. So those are the three methods. Uh, here's a picture of the, uh, I think this is the work that we did the Devlin Mud. Go ahead and uh, give me some comments, subscribe if you'd like, and uh, we'll see you next time. Peace.